In this lecture, we're going to be looking at infrared spectroscopy. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to explain the theoretical basis of IR spectroscopy and use a data booklet to interpret IR spectra. Right, we're going to continue with the experimental determination of structure. So we've done elemental analysis, which gives us an empirical formula. Then carry out mass spectrometry, which can turn that empirical formula into a molecular formula and also identify the existence of important fragments. For example, our peak at 77 would suggest the presence of a phenyl group. So we now want to look at what information we can get from infrared spectroscopy. Infrared spectroscopy is really good at identifying certain functional groups. You need to have some idea of the theory behind the IR spectroscopy which allows it to do that. You don't need to know the theory in great detail, just a very brief outline. It relies on the fact that different bonds can absorb different wavelengths of infrared light. So CO bond, C double bond O, would absorb infrared light at a diff of a different wavelength than the OH bond. So how do the bonds absorb infrared light? Well, the infrared light causes the bending and stretching of these bonds and it allows them to absorb light of the appropriate wavelength. So what you really, really need to remember for the theory is that the absorption of IR light is caused by the bending and stretching of the bonds. Just a small point, they don't give you the wavelength of the IR light that is absorbed, they give you the wave number. This is just for historical reasons, it's, they really could change it to wavelength but they don't. So the wave number is just the reciprocal of the wavelength. So the wave number equals 1 divided by the wavelength. It's not something you really have to worry about, but just so you're aware of where these strange units come from. So the wavelength is in centimetres, the wave number is per centimetre. Okay, so let's look at what our IR spectra might look like. Along the bottom, we've got the wave number, okay? and up the side, we've got the transmittance. So, 100% transmittance means that there's no absorption of light. So, we can see there's various wavelengths or wave numbers where light, the IR light, has been absorbed. It's been absorbed here, 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 here. Okay. At advanced higher level, we basically ignore everything below 1400. It's called the fingerprint region. It is useful, but you really need computer software to interpret it. So basically, from about 1400-1500 really, we just ignore this part of the spectra, which significantly simplifies it. Uh, it's not nearly as noisy up this end as it is down here. So we've got two main peaks here. To find out what they might be due to, we look at page 14 of our data booklet. So here's page 14 of our data booklet. It's called the infrared correlation table. It's got three columns. It's got the wave number in per centimetre. The type of compound which might give rise to a peak in that area. And the actual bond which is bending or stretching to cause that peak. And if in the exam you're trying to remember what the theory of IR spectroscopy is, how it works, if you look at this table, it reminds you that it's due to the bending or more commonly the stretching of certain bonds. Right, the table looks very complicated, but uh, we can simplify it somewhat. There's certain peaks that we usually look out for in IR spectroscopy. If we get a peak round about just above 1700, 
can see here they're all due to CO, 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 CO. So a C double bond O. If there's a C double bond O bond in your molecule, you're going to get a big peak just above 1700. It might be due to an ester, aldehyde, aromatic ester, carboxylic acid, ketones. Okay. If you're reading the peak of the graph, the graph t the peak tends to be quite wide and there's no way you can differentiate between it being due to C double bond on an ester as opposed to C double bond on a ketone. Sometimes in questions they might specify an exact wave number. Say there was a peak at 1745, in which case you could maybe differentiate between it. So 1745 only lies in this region here, so that would suggest it was an ester. But reading from a graph itself, you wouldn't be able to make that differentiation. So that's the first thing to look for. Big peak just above 1700, be a C double bond O. The other peak that uh, infrared radiation, the other bond that infrared radiation is really good at identifying the presence of is an OH group. Okay. And you'll find that at a high wave number. So round about 3,200 to 3,600, you'll see peak due to the presence of an OH bond. Slightly confusingly, if that OH bond is present in a carb carboxyl group, the peak gets even broader and it goes from about 2,500 to 3,500 and it's centred around about 3,000, whereas this one is centred around about 3,200, well, 3,300. So they're the two main bonds that you identify by IR spectroscopy. C double bond O and an OH, either in a carboxyl group or not in a carboxyl group. There's lots of other peaks you will see and any of them could come up in exam, but that's the ones that mainly come up. Maybe one last thing worth pointing out. You tend to get quite a lot of noise just below the 3000 mark. And they tend to be due to CH bonds, which you're going to find in all organic molecules, so it's not incredibly useful. Okay, let's look at some spectra. First of all, we'll look at some spectra that I've just roughly hand drawn to simplify them a wee bit. Okay. I haven't bothered showing anything below 1400. Right, the main feature huge big absorption around about 1700 so there's going to be a C double bond O in this molecule it's a little bit of noise just below 3000 just to, due to CH bonds so there's no sign of any OHs so it's not a carboxyl group but we've got a C double bond O so it might be an aldehyde might be a ketone might be an ester Okay, in this molecule, again, big peak, about 1700, we've got a C double bond O. And there's a big feature up here as well, very broad peak, centred around about 3000. That suggests an OH in a carboxyl group, which together with the C double bond O here, tells you that you've got a carboxylic acid. And this one, no peak at 1700, so we know we haven't got a C double bond O. There is a big peak up here, centred about halfway between 3000 and 3500. That suggests an OH group, not in a carboxyl group, just an alcohol. So if you compare those three graphs again, these two have a C double bond O. This one's got this broad peak centred on 3000, which suggests a carboxyl group. And this one hasn't got a C double bond O, but has got an OH group. Okay, let's look at some real spectra. Okay. Tend to be a 
bit noisier, bit messier than those ones I'd hand drawn. Okay, firstly, let's forget about everything down here. Okay. So really we're just interested in these two peaks. So that's 15, 16, 1700, big absorption just above 1700. So that is going to be due to the presence of a C double bond O. Then we've got this large broad peak centered around about 3000, which tells us we've got an OH group as part of a carboxyl group. So these two things together tells us we've got a C double bond O, OH in our molecule. Okay, this is what I expect IR specs would look like for ethanol. Okay. So we've got C double bond O, so we get a big peak at 1700, ignoring all of this. So up here, all we've got is a bit of noise just below 3000, that's due to all the CH bonds. Okay, so that's quite a simple spectra. And this is for butin 1 all. Firstly, note the absence of a peak at 1700. So we know we've not got a C double bond O. The main feature is this absorption between 3000 and 3500, which is typical of a OH hydroxyl. And the noise here just below 3000 is just due to all the CH bonds. Okay, so remember the theory of how IR spectra works absorption of IR light due to the bending and stretching of certain bonds. Use the spectra to identify certain functional groups. Most commonly the C double bond O group, the carboxyl group or an OH group. But you know it could be anything in that table. So by now you should be able to explain the theoretical basis of IR spectroscopy and use the data booklet to interpret IR spectra.